together with some people everywhere. You want to help build a world that we are live together in peace and friendship, overcoming barriers, healing divisions, rejecting violence and prejudice. And this is exactly what God wants for us. There you have Pope Francis in South Korea last year with a message of peace, friendship, and understanding, something we certainly don't have enough of in this world. Welcome back to America's Forum. I'm John Bachman. A new poll shows that America apparently can't seem to get enough of Pope Francis. According to a Wall Street Journal poll, Vera, 56% of Americans <laughs> wow. hold a favorable opinion of the Pope. That seems a little low to me, but we know the president would kill for those types, uh, type of approval numbers. Only 44% of Americans say they feel the same way about President Obama. <laughs> so a little political uh, conversation there, but we want to get into more of this now with the former ambassador to the Holy See, Ray Flynn, and also, of course, Vera Gibbons sticking around too. Great to have you with us, Ambassador. We, we see these approval numbers for Pope Francis. Why do you think that what his message is, is resonating so well with this country? Well, it's refreshing to hear a public figure like Pope Francis uh, speak and demonstrate this humility that we don't often find in our political leaders and speak frankly to the uh, to the public even though many of the political leaders don't pay attention to what he has to say particularly about the crisis that's happening in the Middle East and Africa but nonetheless I think he's the, perhaps the one moral voice that people can identify with throughout the country and throughout the world. And he's been consistent throughout all this. Uh, Miranda, go ahead and weigh in on this conversation. Sure. Well, I want to get your opinion. How do U.S. Catholics view the Pope? Well, I think very favorably for obvious reasons. It's refreshing in this climate of uh, political correctness in politicians who are afraid to speak out about the, the atrocities and the tragedies that are taking place around us uh, that Pope Francis is not afraid. Uh, he's like Pope John Paul II. He expresses what's really important, what's on people's minds, what's in people's hearts. And I think that's the secret of the success of the popularity of uh, Pope Francis. And by the way, it's consistent. I know him very well. It's consistent. This isn't just an image that has been created when he became uh, when he became pontiff for the Roman Catholic Church throughout the world. This is consistent with his, his theology, his philosophy when he was, when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires. Uh, Ray, yeah, when I remember as a kid, my mom got, put us all in the car when we went to see Pope John Paul II. It was a huge event up in Boston. Um, how does this Pope's popularity compare to Pope John Paul? Because in my generation, Pope John Paul was it. Yeah, no, it, 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 it different era. Yes. You know, at that time, Pope John Paul II came in in 1978. What was the big issue in the world at the time was the the power and the influence and the brutality of communism uh, and how it affected so many countries, particularly in Eastern Europe. Uh, John Paul II worked with President Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, and they had a powerful impact in the collapse of communism. What's the issue today? It's uh, killing in, in, uh, of Christians throughout the world. This season of hope that we're gathered here, families will gather throughout the United States, throughout the world, namely Easter, has become a season of despair, a season of shame, in fact, because of our political leaders uh, refuse to take a position. As I say, political correctness now dominates what they talk about. A pizza shop in, uh, is become in Indi Indiana has become more of an issue that they talk about than the brutality and the killing of innocent Christian ch children in Kenya by radical Islamic groups. So we're seeing uh, politicians now escaping the tough issues to focus on the popular issues and therefore we're seeing the world in crisis this Easter season. And that is a good way to put it. Others would say the world is on fire, and especially when you put things in perspective, Ambassador, of what's going on and what just took place in Kenya, uh, and we're all arguing about a pizza shop. Certainly does put things in perspective. We're going to have you stick around with us, uh, Ambassador, real quick. We're going to continue our conversation talking about this week in particular, Vera, Holy Week, and Pope Francis' message for the world, also the 10th anniversary this week of the death of Pope John Paul. And what we didn't talk about right there 
uh, was uh, Pope Benedict in mm -hmm. the middle of all this. And we get more to talk about on this aspect as well. But we did not want to let this Holy Week pass and Good Friday pass, the most solemn day for most in the Christian calendar. Of course, uh, you grew up Catholic, right? Mm -hmm. Always <laughs> you a little, did too, right? Right. Always <laughs> a little bit of conflict in, in your soul because you're mm -hmm. so excited for Easter. You know your mom's excited for the birth of Christ. Right. But you got to... It's Good Friday, so we got to put well, our game also, faces on. You're also excited for the Easter egg hunts as a kid. Of course, of course. And the Cadbury eggs. Yes. All right, anyway, it's, <laughs> it's uh, Easter. And happy Passover, too. We don't want to forget. we got Ray Flynn coming back with us right after this. This is a moment for everyone throughout the country to be vigilant as we confront and defeat our enemies. There you have Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta calling for calm as military forces work to secure that town of Garissa, which follows that attack in the university there, which killed 147 people. Welcome back to America's Forum. I'm John Bachman. Alongside with us is Vera Gibbons uh, and also Ray Flynn. I think we might have Miranda join us as well for this conversation as well. And we, we talked about the situation in Africa, Ambassador Flynn. And as you mentioned, with Pope John Paul was so instrumental and Christianity really as a whole in, in helping the situation in Africa during his papacy. How disappointing is it for you to see things devolve in Africa, uh, especially as Christians are targeted in, in more and more volume? Well, I was in Africa many times and I was in Somalia. I was in that very area uh, in Kenya where this uh, brutality took place uh, yesterday. Interesting, the 10th anniversary of the death of John Paul II. Um, and uh, it's spiraling out of control. There's no really any moral leadership or political leadership. It's a group of, of bandits, of terrorists, is uh, radical uh, religious terrorists uh, controlling the political environment in many of these countries, many of these areas in the Middle East and, and in Africa. You know, John, we don't even have to watch the accounts on TV this yeah. Easter season about the crucifixion of Christ. We're seeing the crucifixion of innocent Christian children in, in countries like uh, in, in, in Kenya and throughout the world, the Middle East. Uh, it's right before our eyes. And, you know, if the world ended today, uh, a lot of people would, a lot of political leaders would have a lot to account for, explain why they sat silently while the fire and the hate and the brutality and the killing was, uh, were taking place. I, I, you know, I, I studied the Holocaust. I was fascinated what took place in Europe in the early 1930s. But you know what? I think people in the f future, people are going to be, generations are going to be looking at this era in our history and saying, where was the moral conscience of the world when we could allow innocent, powerless, uh, young children be brutalized and the rest of the world remain silent? Mm. So, Ray, then let me ask you, what should we be doing? Well, there's, you know, certainly we should be speaking out. I made the reference to the pizza shop. I didn't mean to be flippant about that. But that dominates. I watched the TV yesterday, uh, and I get reports all the time from the Vatican almost on an hourly basis to be informed what's going on. I watched this whole situation about the pizza shop in Indiana, as important as that is to many people. But what about these other issues? What about the crisis of, uh, of uh, terrorist? Uh, radicalism that's taking place across the world and why is it that we're not seeing much of that on TV yes we're seeing it here on Newmax and uh, Newsmax and to your credit but I haven't been invited I haven't seen anybody on uh, any of the major stations uh, in this country uh, there's no really outrage <laughs> There's no indignation. What can we do? First of all, we could be putting a lot of pressure on our political leaders to speak out. I don't want to hear our political leaders talking about frivolous, unrelated, unimportant issues, uh, about pipelines, as, as again, as important as that is. But I want to know about what is happening in the world. I want to know what they're doing about this outrage that is taking place in the world and why aren't they speaking out. You know, public opinion rules the world. I don't know who said it, but it's true today as it ever has been. But public opinion is silent ab about what is happening in the Middle East. The first thing we do as citizens, don't just vote, 
put these people in Washington and let them do whatever they want to do. A good government, as John Paul II used to say, is a faithful government to its values and its commitment. A faithful Christian is a good citizen. And that's what we're not seeing in America today. I mean, are you stunned by the fact that some um, news outlets and others have sort of downplayed the whole anti-Christian attack, saying, you know, maybe it's just a random act of violence and, you know, they're not even mentioning religion in their headlines, that kind of thing? I mean, does that surprise you and does that outrage it's, you? Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing to me. You know, I, I don't want to be critical of all these television stations, but, you know, we're watching the previews of the crucifixion of Christ and mm -hmm. we'll watch it and we're riveted about the Bible and, and killing Jesus and all this. But this is happening in modern day. This is happening today. Not to Christ, but to Christ's children, to his Christians, innocent Christian children, the crucifixion and the beheading of, of people who have the courage to stand up and say, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. They refuse to back down. Isn't that what happened with Jesus Christ? He would not back down on what he believed, and they crucified him. Well, today, that's what's happening in the world today, and it happened in Kenya yesterday, and yet, no moral outrage. No. I don't understand it. And there's also, I think, a certain element, a, a amount of uh, numbness, too. Yes. You hear so much yeah. about the violence, not necessarily the reasons for the violence, well, just as the ambassador is talking about. And it's, and it's kids. It's kids. We're going to continue this conversation. Uh, Miranda Vera and Ambassador Flynn will be back with me right after this.